What is up, everybody? I hope you're having an awesome week so far. Happy Wednesday to you. Unfortunately, we're not being able to uh, meet tonight at, at uh, church for Wednesday night thing, um, but it was really good seeing everybody at church on Sunday, um, and then uh, some of you on uh, at uh, graduation on Monday. Um, shout out to uh, to uh, all our graduating seniors. Um, and uh, so just wanted to share a little bit with you from, uh, from Scripture today. Um, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8 and 9, it says, Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of his fury will fail. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. Grace, right? We talk about it all the time. Unmerited favor, unearned kindness, undeserved niceness. Um, however you want to refer to it, we uh, should be more gracious. We should be people of grace. We should be marked by grace. Um, I don't mean that we should be uh, graceful because um, some of us are pretty clumsy, right? Um, but I mean gracious as in kindness and favor towards people that didn't earn it or even more so don't deserve it. We should be sowing more grace. We should be more generous with our time, with our money, with our efforts, with our gifts, with our lives. The people around you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, acquaintances, and even strangers, even your enemies, yes, your enemies, deserve and need your grace. Think about this. How often do you dole out justice? You know, uh, decide that you're going to give people what you think they deserve. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I was at the beach, right? I went down to the beach with my family. I was there with my um, uh, my immediate family, and my brother and sister-in-law, and their little boy, my nephew. Um, and we knew that the we were staying in Gulf Shores, which is in Alabama. And Alabama was not open. Restaurants were not open for, like, sitting down and eating, right? And so we were like, we had heard that Florida was. So we decided we were going to take a short little trip over into Florida, and we were going to go to... I think the Crab Shack is what it was called. Um, we had to drive through the mess um, and the ridiculousness that was Florabama um, and got over to the Crab Shack. Waited in line, no problem. We were like, man, we're going to sit down. We're going to eat inside a restaurant. We haven't been able to do this for months. We're going to get unlimited sweet tea. We're going to get like food and appetizers. It's, it's going to be amazing. Because um, we had just finished like this long bike ride. And for those of you that know me, you know I don't like bikes. And you know I don't like exercise so like this was my reward right we're going to the crab shack we're going to get seafood we're going to get we're going to get to eat inside i'm excited right my brother-in-law if you know him uh chris is like super excited because he he may love food more than i do um which is pretty much a lot but anyway so we're going we're excited and we get there and we don't wait that long um and we get a table right super excited again well let me just say, the, the experience was, was, the food was great, the tea was great, everything was great, except our waiter. Our waiter was, and I'm not trying to put him on blast, but like, he was, he was pretty bad. Like, really bad. Um, like, didn't bring us, like, condiments. Didn't even bring us, like, um, forks and stuff to eat with. Uh, brought us our entrees, and like, all our entrees were getting cold because we didn't have anything to eat our food with. Um, no refills on drinks, that kind of stuff. Like, Really, really terrible service, um, but still, at the end of the day, at the end of my time there, Ashley was like, you know, are you going to, you know, because obviously that, that thought in your mind goes, you know, um, are you going to tip this guy? How much are you going to tip him? Are you going to kind of minimize it? Here's what I did. I gave the guy a 25% tip, right? I don't say that to be to be like, oh, look at me and look how spiritual it is. But you got to remember, like we tip and we act because of who we are, not because of what anybody else is. So because I know that I'm, Christ, I'm, I'm in Christ and that I belong to God, how people act towards me doesn't matter because I don't need them to act a specific kind of way towards me. I don't need good service from anybody. Would I like good service? Sure, you know. Uh, bring me some sweet tea. I like that. I'd like some ketchup. My kids would like some ketchup with their fries. I get that. But do I need it? Do I need it? No. Because why? Because everything I need, I already have through the finished works of Jesus Christ. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. So think about this. How often do you try to dole out justice? 
How do you, uh, how often do you try to give people what you think they deserve? How often do you tip less for bad service? How often do you ignore people who have snubbed you? Um, maybe you give a heavy sigh or an eye roll or a social media rant um, at the person who has the cart full of groceries um, in the 10 items or less aisle or the person who, oh, this drives me crazy, who drives slow in the left lane or puts their car in two parking spaces because, like, what's the deal, dude? Can't you park in one spot, right? Listen, you may not think that you're doing evil, and most oftentimes we don't think that we don't think about doing evil, but we're certainly not doing any good. I mean, ask yourself this question. When the people, like, when people are around me, do they begin sentences with things like, I know I shouldn't feel this way, but, or I know it's wrong, but they have those little disclaimers, right? If they do, it may be because they're afraid of being judged by you or that maybe you're not really marked by grace in your life. Think about this. Are you known as a person of grace or a, a person of karma? Do you see, um, like, do people see in you or me the, the principle of you get what you deserve or what goes around comes around? See, if this is true about you, then people are not seeing Christ in you and they won't see Christ in you if that's your attitude. But what they are going to do is they're going to get a good dose of false religion. And in this way, we become, when we become this way, we become uh, essentially prophets of a false religion, false prophets, because we're preaching something with our lives and with our actions that isn't grace, and it isn't the gospel. So we're teaching something else. Listen, karma, what goes around comes around, is commonly understood in our culture. And it even in some places it's religiously adhered to. But... The gospel principle of doing good to people who don't deserve it, that's different. That's counterculture, and that's what Jesus was all about. See, God calls us, listen, he calls us and commands us to love justice and demonstrate mercy. Jesus commanded us, his followers, to live generously and to offer grace, even to our enemies. So why are we offering less to those around us than uh, that which we have so generously and so bountifully um, received from God that God is so lavished over our lives. Listen, these are the people that we've been called by God to be his ambassadors to. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 43 through 48. He says, this is the words of Jesus. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, right? But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there for you? Or what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors, Jesus says, do that much. But if you are, And if you're only kind to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans, unbelievers, do that. But you ought to be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. See, listen, I get it. It's easier to do what we believe is justice, but this is flawed. This is a flawed way of thinking. And our justice is flawed because we are flawed. Wanting to give people what we think that they deserve in the form of justice uh, however flawed it may be, is just a form of self-righteousness. And acting as a judge not only puts you in the seat where God is supposed to be, but it also feeds your ego. You were not made to be the judge. And that is not your primary role or your, or your primary function. You were made for the glory of God and for the good of others. We've said this, th we've said this a hundred times. Listen, God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbor does. You were created to love and serve God by loving and serving others. What we need to consider is that God commands us to live graciously because he is gracious. He commands us to be patient, kind, and merciful because those are his attributes. They come from him. They begin in him. And because we know him, and because you know and have experienced his grace, God has that that God has extended his grace and his mercy and his kindness to you, his love and forgiveness to you, that he's blessed us when we deserve far less. As a child of God, 
we need to understand that because we can do, because he's done all those things and we've experienced all those things, we can then extend all of that to other people. As a child of God, we must re- represent our Father well by showing and sowing grace. Here's the thing. People want to be around people who extend grace. Grace gives birth to grace. We talked about that the other day. The grace that you extend to others will always, always, always assist you in sharing the gospel. Remember, it is within the context of our relationships that our fundamental understanding or misunderstanding of the gospel is put on full display. The people who know that they've received grace from God, the people who understand the gospel, who truly understand the gospel, give grace to other people. Plain and simple. They forgive. They love. They give grace. They extend mercy. It's that simple. All right, so here's the challenge today. Think about think about the last time that you could have extended grace, but you didn't, right? How did you react? How was that wrong? How, how could you have reacted better? Put that down in your prayer journal today. Then I want you to write five ways that you can extend grace to those around you today. Maybe to your family, a brother or sister. Maybe to a friend or whatever. Write down five ways that you can extend grace. Lastly, when you're done, share a story on, on, uh, on GroupMe about a time that you maybe should have shown grace or maybe your, your patience was tested and you either did or you didn't share grace. It's all right. No judgment here. Um, we're just all trying to learn and grow together. It's all good. Um, share it. Let's all grow together. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Oh, my goodness, so much. If you need anything, uh, your family needs anything, please reach out to me. Let me know. It's confidential. I won't say nothing to nobody. I just want to make sure that I can get, get some help to you uh, if you need it. All right? I love you. I miss you guys. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, you definitely want to watch. Uh, Brother Brandon and I are going to be doing a, uh, a live stream on Facebook. Um, and we're going to be just kind of uh, giving a shout out to all of our graduating seniors from Cave Spring. Um, definitely want to tune in with your parents if you don't have your own Facebook account. Uh, you get to sh- you'll be able to share like funny stories and things like that. We'll be it'll be super interactive, um, and uh, so do that tomorrow night six o'clock on Facebook Live uh, through our church uh, through our church Facebook page. Um, also, uh, speaking of seniors, senior recognition will be on Sunday, May 31st at our morning service at 10, 15 a.m. Seniors, if you're watching this, make sure your parents get your pictures in. Uh, students, if you're watching this, come and support your fellow uh, seniors. Um, again, be, uh, be supportive as you want people to be supportive of you when you graduate, right? All right, again, love you guys. I miss you guys. I will see you all soon. Bye.